World number one Rafael Nadal needed an hour to win the first set at the ongoing U.S. Open final 6-3 against Kevin Anderson at Flushing Meadows. The world number one is a heavy favorite to beat the 28th seeded South African Anderson, but was made to work for his openings in a tight opening set. The Spaniard, however, made a decisive break to go 4-3 up and repeated the trick to secure the opening set and open the second on serve. African champions, the D Tigers, this evening suffered their first defeat at the FIBA men's Afro basket. The defending champions were stunned by the Democratic Republic of Congo, 83 points to 77 points in a thrilling tie in Tunis. Nigeria, which started brightly, clinching the first quarter 20 points to 19 points, also led the second quarter 17 to 15 points. Both sides were tied up in the tied in the quarter 18 all. However, the Congolese side totally dominated the fourth quarter 31 to 21 points. With two wins already from Group A, the D Tigers advanced to the quarterfinals, which dunks off on Thursday. In the English Premier League, Newcastle United this evening earned a second successive win following a 1-0 victory at Swansea City. The first away win in the EPL since 2015 sees the Magpies climb up to 10th on the table, while the Swans slip to 15th after losing their opening two home league games of the season for the first time since 1985. In another tie, Chris Wood scored on his full debut as Burnley beat Crystal Palace 1-0 to move into the top half of the table and increase the pressure on Eagles boss Frank de Boer. Palace remain without a league goal or points this season under Dutchman de Boer, chronically short of confidence and second bottom of the division. Meanwhile, the U.S. 2017 Open champion Sloane Stevens admits she felt nervous before and during her championship decider against Madison Keys. In the first All-American final since 2002, Stevens ran via to win 6-3, 6 love in a surprisingly one-sided encounter on Arthur Ashe Stadium. Stevens' win makes her the only second unseeded player to win the women's singles title in the Open era. Hurricane Irma has hit the U.S. state of Florida, dumping at least two feet of water in many parts of the city of Miami. More than 6.3 million people were told to evacuate in anticipation of the hurricane following warnings of a life-threatening storm surge. At least 27 people have been confirmed killed in the disaster, and part of Miami's financial district is said to already be underwater. Irma gained strength as it made landfall in the U.S. state of Florida on Sunday with a double barrel threat of destructive winds and life-threatening storm surges, prompting one of the largest evacuations in U.S. history. Officials ordered 6.3 million people, a third of the state's population, to evacuate, creating massive traffic jams on highways and overcrowding shelters. Packing winds of 130 miles per hour, Irma knocked out electricity to more than one million Florida homes and businesses. Governor Rick Scott says he has requested a major disaster declaration from President Donald Trump and warned the devastating storm surges will hit the western coast of Florida as it churns northwards. We have seen tornadoes in central South Florida and the threat will continue today and tonight. Following Miami, Tampa would be next in line. Downtown Tampa was largely deserted by noontime. President Trump, who has been tweeting warning messages about the storm, called on people in Florida to find safety as quickly as possible. In a video from Camp David, he urged people to stay out of the way of the storm's path and said it was monitoring the situation around the clock. This is a storm of enormous destructive power. And I ask everyone in the storm path to heed all instructions, get out of its way. 
Vice President Mike Pence revealed President Trump was worried by the latest briefing on the impact of the hurricane and the National Hurricane Centers issued a warning that water could rise as high as 15 feet at the Naples and Marco Island area and that people should move away from the water. The storm has either been downgraded to Category 3, according to the Hurricane Center. The Myanmar government has indicated it may not be observing a one-month unilateral ceasefire proposed by the Arakan Rohingya Salvation Army, saying it will not negotiate with terrorists. The group had announced a truce today via Twitter, calling on the Myanmar army to lay down their weapons. It said it was in order to enable humanitarian actors to assess and respond to the humanitarian crisis in the state of Rakhine. More than 250,000 Rohingya people have crossed the border into Bangladesh to escape the violence that began in August. Rohingya residents say the Myanmar military and Rakhine Buddhists are waging a brutal campaign against them, burning the villages. The government insisted it's fighting against terrorists. And the main news again, the Adamawa State Government and the Victim Support Fund have earmarked 390 million naira for the rehabilitation of public facilities affected by the insurgency. The Senate Committee on Police is seeking increased funding for the force to address special security operations in the country. Members of the committee were speaking in Kaduna today during a visit to the operation base of the special force set up by the Inspector General of Police to address the crime rates along the Abuja Kaduna Expressway. That is the news at 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night.